guys, I have a little something different for you, a little more personal. It's actually the anniversary of when Carnage and Pickles went missing. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that and just remember them and honor them. Long story short, most of you already know the story, but just for people who don't know me, I'm going to refresh you on what happened. What had happened was, I went over to my neighbor's house, who's a very close friend of mine, and my dogs go there, over there all the time. Well, to, uh, this one particular day, I decided to leave them in the backyard. While I went over to her house, I wasn't going to be there long, I only ended up staying about two hours. And when I came back, it was probably about 5.30, Derek had already been home. So I just, when I went to the backyard and noticed that they weren't there, the gate was wide open, I assumed that they were inside the house. So I walk in here and it's quiet, like eerily quiet, like not, when you assume something different and they come into a room expecting that and it's silent, you know from the get-go something is up. So I walk over to Derek and I stare at him like, what the hell? And he's looking at me like, what? I'm like, where are the dogs at? And he's like, I thought they were with you. I'm like, no, I haven't brought them over to Jennifer's in a long time. Why would you think that I brought them over there? And he's just like, I don't know. I'm like, well, they're not in the backyard, so we need to go find them. So immediately, him and I, we get into our cars, and we drive up and down our street, up and down the side street, calling their name. And of course, you already know, all of our neighbors are our family, so they're like, what's going on? And we're like, we can't find Carnage and Pickles. I was over at my neighbor's house. It got to the point where we were really starting to panic. They have run off to the neighbor's houses before, and we're like, oh, just like bring them back here. And Within the two hours that I had, they had been out of my sight, they were absolutely nowhere to, to be found. Not anywhere in sight, not anywhere. We started to panic. Our hearts and our lives were shattering in slow motion. This dog, Carnage, he was a, he's a great nose pit bull. He was the love of Derek's life. When Derek was going through a really hard time before he had met me, Carnage was there for him. Carnage was his buddy, his best friend, his partner in crime, his other half. And I was responsible for him that day. I lost him on my watch. And I couldn't even begin to explain to you what kind of psychological damage it did to my head. Like, and people who were telling me, Paula, it's just a dog. It's just a dog. You get another one. They obviously don't know what it's like to have a companionship with a dog, with a pet. They are our family. They are not our little playthings. They're not for our amusement. They're our friends. They're our family. We've grown quite attached to them. And when you raise something from a tiny little puppy and you watch them grow as an adult and you take part of their life, like their everyday life, and you, learn, you teach them how to sit, you teach them how to walk, you teach them how to eat, teach them tricks, teach them this, teach, teach them that. Yeah, you're gonna grow attached to that animal. You gave it a fucking name. Hello? It's not just a fucking dog. And for me and Derek, like, our lives were, like, those were our kids. And I don't care what anyone says if they're just that, you know, they're not compared to real kids. Yeah, of course not. They're humans and dogs are entirely different species. We were fully, fully responsible for these creatures' lives, and they're gone. We have no idea where they are. And someone has the audacity to say that to us? Our house was so empty. From the moment him and I had lived together, we've always had carnage and pickles. And we, then we got a cat. Then we got two cats. First one went missing because he was out hunting. Then we got Crowley and Penny. Penny passed away because she was running out of the litter and she had a cold and she couldn't fight it. That to me was one of the one of those things that really tore me up too. Because when again, when you are responsible for another creature's life, whether it's a human or a dog or a cat, you take full responsibility for what happens to them. And that was the first thing I held her lifeless body in a body bag about that small because she was just a kitten. Imagine that feeling. Anyone who's lost someone or lost a child knows what it's like to hold a tiny little body bag. I was on the, my hands and knees crying my eyes out because I couldn't take care of her. I couldn't save her life. Crowley, he was one of the best cats ever. He was a 
beautiful white and gray Man mancoon and he was a killer. And then, of course, his hunting skills became too great. He got too cocky. And when I came home from New York, he was gone. My poor Gemma. She thought I left her. Because I called for her, Gemma! 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 And she came from out of, out, way out in the fields, came fucking speech. Because she was a rescue cat. She thought she got abandoned again. Of course I wouldn't do that to my babies. I love them. And then... Just a few weeks later, this past August was the anniversary of her going missing. There were, there, it felt like there were ghosts in our house. Like, cause I'd come home and I'd hear a noise or something. And I'd just assume, oh, it's just one of the cats. It's just one of the dogs. No, there's no one here. It's just me and Derek and just memories everywhere. I couldn't look at anything. I couldn't, it got to the point where I couldn't even look at their pictures anymore. I had to take a lot of pictures down because there were had carnage and pickles in them. Derek and I got into this huge, huge fight. Those animals were our entire lives. They were, you know, our reason to get up and go to work every morning. They were our the loves of our life. Like me and Derek took a lot of pride in them, a lot of pride in our animals. And it started to feel like everybody was judging us. Everybody was looking at us. Like how could you do this? How could you continue to get animals and lose them? When that wasn't the case at all. Have you guys seen where we live? We live out in the country, you, in the middle of the night, you can hear coyotes howling, screaming, and crying, and they're doing it to lure animals like ours away from the home and try to see who are these poor little babies that are crying. No one. It's no one. It's the fucking coyotes and they want to kill. And of course, I'm not going to blame them because that's just in their nature. They're wild animals. But don't you dare try to say that me and Derek don't love our animals. That's not the case at all. A, few, a couple of months pass, and we finally decide, okay, we don't want to feel like this anymore. We don't want to feel like our purpose in this world has disappeared. I don't want to fight with you anymore. I don't want to be hateful towards you anymore. Because me and Derek, we love each other. We're our best friends, and we have this beautiful home together, and we weren't about to let this spoil everything that we've made together. We looked for Carnage and Pickles for a long time, and we realized that if they're not dead, they were taken from us. And whoever took them from us did not have good intentions because they did not try to bring him back. And we, I can promise you that this entire town knows exactly who Carnage and Pickles are and who we are and that we were looking for them because we went everywhere around town. We've made posts Posts on Facebook. We made flyers. I went to the Chili Festival and gave everybody a fucking flyer. Put them on all of the billboards I could find in this town. Everyone knew who Carnage and Pickles were. Everyone knew that they were missing. And everyone knew that we were their parents. And someone didn't bring them back to us. So if they're not dead, someone who was malicious and mean and evil used Carnage and Pickles for their own selfish benefit. And I hope that some bad things happen to you as well. Come late, up, late middle October, we've decided we don't want to do this anymore. We don't want to live in this agony and this pain anymore. There is this emptiness inside of our hearts that we need to fill. And I'm going to show you who filled it for us. Say hello. This is Maggie, or Magatha. She's named after the strongest woman I know, Maggie Green from The Walking Dead. She filled our hearts with so much love and purity and sweetness. She's a little brat, and I love her for it, but she's also like the most... She's so soft and she's so... She fixed mine and Derek's relationship. She brought us back together. She taught us what love was again. She taught us about forgiveness. She taught me that with an ending, there's always a beginning. And she was our new beginning. And she's still here with us almost a year later. We had decided that she's not an outdoor cat. She's an indoor cat. And that's what helped us hang on to her. And another thing is that staying quiet about her would help us, would help us grow more attached to her. Because after everything that had happened between the six animals that either died or went missing on us, we, couldn't, we didn't want to share our relationship with Maggie to the world up until now. You, barely, you still barely see me post about her because I couldn't bear losing her. 
So I wanted to keep my relationship with her more private and more personal. And for everyone to not really know who she is made me feel like I didn't have to prove anything to anybody. And she loves to cuddle at night. She's super soft and sweet. She doesn't like to play too much, but she's definitely my big cuddle bud. She's definitely my little sweetheart, and she's a spoiled little brat. But just loving on her and feeling her purr on my face, she eased a lot of my depression. She... There are no words to describe how grateful I am for Maggie and what she's done for me and Derek and what she's done for my heart and my... and like gave me a new hope that we can keep an animal and she will be in our lives for a long time. And I really hope this October, after this next October issue, we would have her for about a year. And we had Gemma for about a year, but of course two months later she went missing. After we hit the year and three month mark, I know she'll be here to stay. That's why it's so hard for me to introduce my new animals to everybody, is because I don't want to jinx myself. And then as silly as that sounds, like it just makes more sense to me and Derek. And then we realized you know, after having her and how sweet and cute she was that we needed to get her a friend. And she's right here. You wanna say hi? Come here. This one's a little more feisty. This is Luna. Luna is named after the first cat that I ever fell in love with. Her name is also Luna from Sailor Moon. She doesn't like to be held too much. She's also really heavy. She is a manx. That's why she doesn't really have a tail. She's she is our class clown, she is our jester, she makes us laugh, and, you know, she gives Maggie friendship and companionship as well as us. And you can always expect to, her to greet you at the door and exclaiming at you, meow, meow, meow. she wants butt pads. And what are those butt pads? She's not going to show us because she's eating. She loves to eat. She was definitely like more boisterous and has a bigger personality than Maggie and that's what we have been missing in this house is laughter. I mean Derek loves to laugh, so we are so happy to have her. She is the light of our life. She's our again, she's our class clown. She She's one of the best things that ever happened to us. And again, we kept quiet about her too because there was really no one in no one else's business but ours. And we wanted to keep our relationship closer to her as well, and we didn't want people to know about her so our relationship could be more personal and we could enjoy her better and not have to worry about, it's like, oh, are you going to lose her too? No, because again, after this October, she is going to be with us for a year as well. So I can say I'm very proud to have both of them. We had our beautiful cats, Maggie and Luna, who have kept us company and fixed our hearts, repaired our hearts, and learned how to love again, and learned how to accept new people into our lives. But we are still missing one more member of our family. We were missing a dog. And Derek and I went back and forth, back and forth. Do we really want another dog? Do we really want to make this a commitment? It was a really tough decision. And I think that without even making the decision, actually saying it out loud, we knew that we wanted another dog. And so this past May, April, May, we decided that we needed a new no member of our family. We needed another dog. And people think like, you don't need another dog, it's just another mouth to feed. But again, our hearts were, were still kind of empty. There's no word. Another animal lover, another dog lover would understand what that's like after having that companionship with a dog for so long and they're gone like that. You need to fill that void again. And of course it took us a long time to heal from losing Carnage and Pickles. Pickles was only, it was almost two years old when he went missing. I barely even got a glimpse of what he was going to be like when he grew up. And I feel like I failed him as a, as a parent. I was supposed to be his everything. And I let him down. And I just 
couldn't bear to think I would do that again. It took a long time for me to finally be like, okay, this is going to be it. We're going to get another dog. And this time, we're going to make sure that we spoil him rotten, give him everything he could ever want, take him everywhere, pay more attention to him. He's going to be with us at, at every moment that we can, that we can have him. And so, let me introduce you to... Everyone, this is Frank. I have been very quiet about Frank. Again, solely for the purpose that I wanted my relationship to be more personable and more private with him. Because it was my way of processing and healing from losing Carnage and Pickles. And I really hope that everybody respects that and understands that. It was really important for me to give him my all and give him everything that I couldn't give Carnage and Pickles. Because, and I don't, and I'm not trying to say that I'm going to treat him better than Carnage and Pickles, but I've learned my mistakes from losing them. I can't go through that twice. I've already gone through it enough. Frank, he goes with us everywhere. He goes across the street to the neighbor's house with me, and he'll go to a friend's house with me. Any store that I can take him into, I'll take him with. Um, he is spoiled, spoiled, spoiled rotten. and has like three different beds in the house. He's become pretty close with the cats, so he's definitely ha he definitely has companionship as well. And he's also really good friends with the dogs next door. The great thing about him is that I can take him. He's <laughs> he is definitely travel size, unlike Carnage and Pickles. They were just two rowdy together, and Carnage was really big with a really long, flappy tail, and so he was just kind of like rough and like. And he, he's my best friend. He's, he's definitely fixed my soul. They all have. And I just, the only thing that I can really tell you as far as advice goes is that don't let a bad experience keep you from getting another animal, whether it be a dog or a cat or a turtle or a bird. Just because you've um, lost one of them or they passed away, like, don't ever take, don't ever beat yourself down for it. Um, just know that when you do decide to get another animal, that you give him your all. And that you never slack on giving them love and attention and affection and the living being, guys. And they need us just as much as we need them. So if you're gonna get an animal, get a pet... Just make sure that you're 110% committed to doing it. They have feelings and emotions just like everybody else. Just as... I'm sorry, this is an emotional video for me, so it's hard to put the words together. So I hope you guys understood what I meant, and I hope that this kind of shed some light on the mysterious, but the mysterious Maggie, Luna, and Frank. So. Thank you for watching again. I really hope that this helps anybody else who's lost an animal before. I know I stumbled a lot, but um, again, this was a really personal video for me. Today is the anniversary of when Carnage and Pickles went missing. If you guys are still out there, if anyone has Carnage and Pickles, I just really hope that you're treating them right. Thank you, guys. I don't really have anything else to say, so I'll see you next time.